Well, there is no question that this evening, when Paul speaks and instructs Timothy, there is a great connection between his words and the last days. And Paul wants Timothy, who lived so long ago, but nevertheless, to be displaying that conduct that we need to be displaying if we should be that generation. That generation that sees the fulfillment of what the prophets spoke of. And that is the various events that must happen for the kingdom of God to be established. And here, make no mistake about it. We do not see the world being perfected by the body of believers, by the congregation of redeemed, by the church. We do not see an improvement, but biblically, and this is what we have to rely upon, the testimony of Scripture, we see that this world is going to get more ungodly. We don't see anything in the Scripture that supports the false teaching that, that the church is going to take over media, that the church is going to take over education and politics and the arts and everything else. We don't see it. It may sound nice, it may make us feel encouraged and uplifted, but it is false. And I believe that it's time to speak out against such individuals that continue to, to put forth a, a message of, of, of falsehood rather than keeping with what the Scripture says. So let's see tonight, what does the Scripture say concerning these things? 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Let's translate this very literally. We read, But this know. Now, we might not see the word order correctly in your translation of the Bible. But I want to be faithful to the word order as much as possible. English has great limitations. But we can be faithful to the Greek text, translating it literally by these words, but this, and that's what's emphatic. He says, but this, no. What is it that we need to know? He says that in the last days, and he's talking about just that, the end times. What are the end times? They are a time of transition. When this world, as we know it, will come to an end. And these events of the last days will bring about God's judgment. God's consuming wrath. You just read the book of Revelation. And what God says about those trumpet judgments. And what he says concerning the bold judgments. Or some Bibles will say vile judgment. However, it's, it's related. It's speaking about God's wrath being poured out, these vials being, being emptied into this world and all the destruction and death and sorrow that comes. And it's all as a result of sinfulness. Sin coming to an end and praise God for his wrath. We don't hear that nearly enough. Praise God for his wrath. And you know why I can praise God for his wrath? Because his wrath was poured out at the cross for me. And because of that, I need not be concerned about the wrath of God. Messiah took the wrath of God when he died upon that cross. He took it completely, fully. Nothing needs to be visited upon God's people. We are not a people that are condemned. But we are a people that have become victorious through the cross. Therefore, praise God for his wrath because there is an inherent relationship between the wrath of God and the cross. And Paul says that he glories in the cross. That means he glories in the wrath of God that Messiah received instead of us. Therefore, we should have confidence and assurance. Look again. But this know that in the last days, and then we have the phrase, for being present. Something's going to be present. And what is that? Well, many English Bibles will say 
perilous times. And this word perilous simply means times that will be very, very difficult to bear, to endure, meaning this. In the flesh, in the natural, you will not be able to endure these things. Now, we need to see this on two levels. First of all, if you are a believer, you are going to experience perilous times in the last days, but the source of that peril is not God. It's not God's wrath. It's not God's punishment. Nothing related to that. We are going to encounter perilous things because of ungodly individuals that have rejected a covenantal relationship with God, rejected His grace, rejected His love. And therefore we read, look again, but this know that in the last days will be present perilous or difficult times. Now look at verse 2. He gets very specific about what will be, and we need to expect this. And what should we expect? For there will be men, and it says here, this is people in general, it's in the masculine, but people who are lovers of self. Now, they are not going to be individuals that love God, that walk with Him, that embrace His truth, that experience the anointing of the Spirit, quite the contrary. They are going to be lovers of self and also lovers of money. Now, it's not by accident that these two things are put together. If you have a love, a, a strong desire for wealth, you are also going to be a lover of yourself, and that's very dangerous. When we love self, we're not walking in truth. When we love self, remember that call to worship from the book of Joshua in chapter 24 and verse 14, where it speaks here about individuals being ones that engaged in idolatry. And idolatry is a selfish act. You choose those gods based upon selfish desires, that you believe that they are going to get you what you want or they are going to allow the sinful things that you want to do. So it's always, idolatry is always motivated in self, getting what you want. And this is going to be a, a strong spirit in the last days. So look again. They're going to be men who are lovers of self, who are lovers of money, who are, are boastful, braggarts, and also ones who are full of pride, prideful ones, blasphemers, and notice this, to parents disobedient. Now, here's what it's telling us. They are going to have a history. They are going to demonstrate consistently from the time that they were small children up until their, their old age that they can not submit to authority. When the Bible says disobedient to parents, it's because they do not want to embrace authority. They rebel against it. Now, this uh, disobedience, this rebellious spirit is an anti-Torah spirit. The Torah teaches us how to submit to God how to fulfill his expectations. Are we saved by the Torah? We are not. Nowhere in the scripture it says that. So we are called to embrace authority. And we embrace, embrace God's authority by encountering his commandments and implementing them to our life. But the spirit of the last days, that spirit of lawlessness, is going to be symbolically seen in this term by disobedient to parents. What else? They are going to be people who are, are not thankful. They are individuals that are ungrateful and also unholy. So this is going to summarize the, the, the character of individuals in the last days. And it gets just as bad as we continue. Look now to verse 3. They are going to be unloving, unforgiving, 
And then most Bibles will say slanderous, slanderous towards others, speaking in an unkind or better yet, an accusing way to other individuals. Now, if you do a study of this, this word for, for slander, it's really being diabolical. It's the same word that the term devil comes from. And these individuals, they're going to be unloving, unforgiving, and they are going to be very, very intelligent in the things of this world. And they're going to use that intelligence in a devilish way, in a diabolical way to get what they want and they don't know something. That what they want is really bring them into bondage to the enemy. And that enemy wants their destruction. That's the deceit. And they're blind to these things. So look again, unloving, unforgiving. They are diabolical. Some will say slanderous. They are, and the next word, I wrote down the Hebrew term, Hebrew term, aksari, which is barbaric or just very, very harsh in, in regard to others, not, not caring. Someone who is, and maybe another term that can help us understand this, is that they are cruel to one another. They, they are barbaric. They are cruel. They do not care about the suffering that they inflict upon other individuals and also they and this last word in in verse three is really three words it's a word for loving but we have a prefix a alpha and that alpha negates it so they're not lovers but they are unloving and what don't they love well the third word is good they don't like things that are good. And what does that mean? They don't like the will of God. So think of this. Here Paul is teaching. And what Paul is saying is this. That there's going to be in the last days, right? That's the context. Perilous, harsh times for believers. Why? Because the world's going to be so different from us. The world's going to be a barbaric, cruel place. People are going to love self, not God. They are going to pursue their desires for wealth. They are going to want prosperity of, of materialistic things. And they are willing to slander. They're unloving, unforgiving. They are people that you don't want to be around. And it gets worse because it says here that these individuals, they are against those things that are good according to God's will. Now, when we look at the first three verses, let me ask you, does this seem as though that we who are part of the congregation, the body of Messiah, what's known as the church, the called out ones, that we are going to have great success in turning over this world? See, there's many false teachers and what they're proclaiming, what they see as visions, false visions is that things are being turned over, brought under the will, brought under the authority, brought under God's blessing. They speak this, people applaud, they get up, but it's all lies. We don't see it in the scripture. We don't see it at all. Look at verse 4. It says, keeps getting worse. They are going to be disloyal. And this means that they are betrayals. They're going to betray one another. And why is that? Look at the next term. They are, and this means they are, maybe the best way for us to understand this in our language is the term, and I wrote this down, headstrong. So they are individuals that are betrayers. They are headstrong. And they, and this goes with a couple of the other words that we've seen, pride, braggarts or haughty now what's the difference well many times people are are very prideful but they want to conceal it they don't want people to see how proud they are they know that's unbecoming and such so they try to conceal it but this is speaking about something that's different this is a person's boastful they are prideful and they don't care if someone sees that in them.
they are so much in bondage to exalting self the the fact that people might go wow that i can't believe that he he said this i can't believe that she behaves this way they don't care because they are in bondage to exalting self because they love themselves and they're only committed to what they think is the best for them and they'll walk over betray anyone in order to get it so once again it says here verse 4 they are betrayers headstrong haughty and then notice this they are lovers of pleasure and this word for pleasure it means a sensual a carnal a physical pleasure that you can feel in the very very being of your flesh now it goes along along with what i've mentioned earlier this hasidic expression the nefesh behemoth that animal instinct and they feel it in their flesh that that gratification of the flesh that's what they love and again they are in bondage to it and woe to the person who who denies them who speaks against this so once more we see that they are lovers of a pleasure rather than lovers of god they they don't like god that's literally the word is philo which is more of a word for liking they don't like god they don't like the things of god they don't like god's standards and here's what's happening what paul is saying is this there is coming a time of of conflict now i believe when we look at the things that are going on in this world and how many governments are responding we can see that right now there is one group of people because they won't obey they won't submit to to the government uh, desires what happens well they are are being labeled they are being denied they are being marginalized they are being being seen and described as as the troublemakers this is why we're in this situation because they won't do what what the governments want them to do now what's going to happen all of this is setting the stage for something much more diabolical something that is going to be against your faith and my faith right now you've got to do this 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 one thing that that all the governments just love and want people to do they pay people to do they reward people to do it because they want to see who they can bribe who is a lover of self who is 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 committed to what they want to do there's a change coming what's the change here it is it's going to begin to be aimed maybe not this year maybe not uh next year but soon thereafter it's going to be aimed against those who follow the instructions of god they're going to be the troublemakers they're going to be the ones that the the governments cannot tolerate that will not will not allow to simply live a normal life they are going to find those who want to serve god and walk according to his standards they're going to find oppression they are going to be marginalized little by little they're going to be put into a box saying these are the troublemakers these are the deplorable ones that that are causing the problems of of this world and they need to be dealt with that's where we're heading and what we're experiencing this uh you know what i'm speaking about what we're experiencing is just a precursor to get to the people of god so they are individuals that love love pleasure rather than lovers of god verse 5 having this same group having a form of godliness of piety oh they come out that they're the loving ones that they're the good ones that they're the caring ones the compassionate ones what they want is not for themselves but for the betterment of everyone this is what he's talking about here having a form of godliness but understand the context is it's a false manifestation it is not true godliness 
they have a form of godliness but it's power now that tells us something it tells us that there is a power to godliness living in a godly way how do i know how to live in a godly way well the holy spirit leads us in that but sometimes we have maybe a trouble discerning the holy spirit's language and that's why we have the commandments of god the commandments of god and the holy spirit they speak that same same revelation that same language so look again it says that that these individuals they have a form of godliness but it's power what do they do they deny what does that mean they rebel against the power of god the holy spirit that third member of the trinity it says and from these from these ones what does it say turn away now we may have some disagreement on when we should turn meaning this there are things that we may be be called to do by by authorities by principalities and we may disagree saying well this is not really the time to you know to go to how can i say stand in opposition to say no to this because really it's 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 not uh attacking me or others you know i'm not going to 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 be someone who who now responds over something like this but what's going to happen is this we're going to see that the the bar is just going to move and we may say well now i i don't feel in my own conscience the conscience that God's given to me and what I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit, I ought not uh, rebel against that. I ought to not stand against that. But be assured, we may disagree when is the right time to say no more. But that time will come. All believers will, and I believe it will be soon, will say, no, we cannot go for this any longer. And what ever whatever might be the consequences so be it see those consequences are worldly consequences things that that we may lose in this world so what we're gonna lose everything in this world it doesn't matter what we lose for the kingdom's sake is going to pay eternal dividends to us so we may have that disagreement whether it now is or or next week or next year or whatever depending upon what happens in this world but be assured it is coming there's going to be a time when each person's going to say i can't agree any longer i can't go along with this you're going to i'm going to have our eyes open up where we say i recognize this as as the activity of the enemy and i stand in opposition it's going to come these individuals it says here they may have a form of godliness but its power they deny and from such individuals it says turn away verse six now we're going to see another characteristic of these of these false believers now i say false believers because what does it say they have a form of godliness they're going to give that presentation but notice what it says look if you would to, to verse six from these ones from these ones they are and that's going to describe it those that enter and here it is to enter in a cunning way in a co covert way it means literally to dress yourself but it's a false presentation so they are going to enter into in a false way masquerading in other words they are going to enter into the homes of burdened down women of sin meaning this they are going to exploit women now this has a very important uh, implication message for us and that's this 
as we, and you need to know this, understand this, as we move closer and closer to the last days, there is going to be a dishonoring, there is going to be an attack against women. Now, let me share with you one such thing, and that is this. Now, oftentimes, my wife and I will get up in the morning, and one of the first things we'll do is that we'll, we'll check some of the websites for news. And, and some of them are becoming more and more, what I would say, not journalistic. And they'll put, oftentimes, these celebrities, and they'll say something about this, this female, and they are empowering themselves. How are they doing that? dressing in a very inappropriate, a very ungodly way. Now, you tell me how showing one's uh, body in an inappropriate way is empowering. What, what, what power? Well, it's power. Power from the enemy. Power from Satan. And what's happening is this, is that in our society, we see that women, women in general, are being dishonored more and more and more. We see numerous attacks. Women throughout the world are suffering more today. There's not a increasing and a value placed upon females as it should be, and the scripture speaks of this. But rather, there's a dishonoring. And this is what the scripture is speaking to in this verse. Look at verse 6. There's going to be those who masquerade, they dress up, that's that word. They're going to behave in a cunning way, but it's literally the word for, for dressing oneself. And here in, in the false pretense. And they're going to enter into the homes of women that have been burdened down with, with sin. They don't feel right. They, they feel far removed from God. There's an emptiness. And, and what's going to happen? These individuals are going to exploit them. So they're ones that they need the gospel. They need the message of salvation, a kingdom hope. That's what they need to hear. What do these people do? They exploit their, their spiritual condition. And they, they utilize falsehood. And they lead them into the wrong path. Because these individuals, these females... They have desires, a variety of desires that lead them away. They are exploited. Now, can men be exploited? Absolutely. Can this also apply to men? Certainly. But we're going to see in the last days a dishonoring, a discrediting, a oppression for, by society, specifically towards women. And that's what's happening more and more in, in our age, in our time. Now look at verse 7. These individuals, these ones that, that have a, a false presentation of godliness, it says they're always learning. Oh, they're, they're very much present themselves as being in the word. It says always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. And it says here, never, literally, never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They don't know the truth. Now, let me just share. There are numerous ministries that fall into that category, that, that preach a prosperity, that, that, that speak about a wonderful time coming of of. of godliness and holiness that the church is going to bring about this this uh, false teaching that we're going to have dominion over the world prior to the establishment of the kingdom of god and the second coming of messiah this is false and and i could go through a couple of the better known ministries that that are false in this regard but hopefully you are mature enough to know who they are and see that as it's being described. So they do something. They oppress the weakest ones, women, and they're always learning. They get that impression, but they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Look at verse 8. 
But which example? Now, all it's saying here is that these are an example. An example, and he's going to say who they are. Now, we have two people mentioned. Now, these are the ones, and we don't see them mentioned by name specifically in the Old Testament, specifically in the book of Exodus. There is Targum Yochanan. This is a, a translation with help. It's kind of an amplified uh, translation of, of the Torah. And what we find in the book of Exodus, and let me give you two chapters, Exodus chapter 7 and Exodus chapter 22. What we find there is these two individuals, not in the Bible. So hear this carefully. Their names don't appear in the Bible, but it appears in ancient, ancient rabbinical writings of the sages, literally before the rabbis, during the time known as the sages. And what do we see? Well, these two are examples for understanding the phenomena that we're talking about in this third chapter, first half of chapter three of Second Timothy. And we have the individual, and we'll say it in the, the literal way, Ianis and also Iambros. These two individuals that I mentioned among the translation, the Targum of Yochanan, we see that he speaks about these two names. He gives their names, not in the Bible. He writes them down. They were known in Jewish literature, ancient Jewish literature, as two, two of the, the false magicians in Egypt that did powerful things, but they did them through the power of, of darkness, through satanic, satanic uh, assistance. And we find that Paul, he uses these two names and he says that these two individuals, remember in Egypt, chapter 7, chapter 22, it's talking about how they also did just what we mentioned, and that is to go and oppress and exploit uh, uh, widows and, and those who are the weakest in society in order to accomplish what they want. So these two individuals, Ianis and Iam Bros, it says that they stood in opposition to Moses. Thus also these, and he says, these type of individuals oppose the truth. They are corrupted men of, of the mind. So these ones, their mind has been corrupted. Another way you could say that. Their mind is depraved because of their sinful desires for their pleasure, for accomplishing what they want to do. So these two individuals in Jewish literature, they oppose Moses. And Moses, when we think of him, we need to think about God's redemptive purposes and God's commands. They stood against these two things, and so in the last days will there be numerous people that do that same thing. They oppose the truth, having their minds corrupted, and then it says, look at the end of verse 8, unproven, undocumented. Now, this is that word we've talked about before, documezo. It's in the noun or an adjective form saying that these people are, are living in a way that does not document what? That they are undocumented concerning the faith. Meaning, simply, it's the word documezo, where we get the word document from, and it speaks about that which is proven, that which has evidence to, to substantiate something. They are unproven, undocumented concerning the faith. So they don't have any evidence that they belong to the faith. Look now to verse 9, our last verse to safety. But they will not proceed far, meaning this. They are not going to be successful. They are not going to accomplish their, their goals. They are going to be cut down by, praise God, his wrath. Now, if you don't praise God for wrath, you don't understand Many of the biblical points, fundamental points 
of the scripture. God's wrath is good. Heaven, read the book of Revelation chapter 18. God's heaven praises him because of his wrath that falls upon such individuals. So they are undocumented concerning the truth. And it says, verse 9, but they will not proceed far or go much for their their minds and literally it says you might translate it folly for their their there's a lack of knowledge it says for their folly their unknowledgeable uh uh minds are evident to all so their folly what they're pursuing what they they do not understand is evident to all and i believe all believers as also these two were now it simply says as these but the these that they're referring to are those two that we talked about in verse 8 based upon exodus 7 and exodus 22 the targum for that those passages those chapter so he's saying in the same way that there were those who oppose the exodus from egypt bringing God's people out of bondage and into the kingdom. There are going to be in the last days a great and mighty evil group that he described. And that these are going to stand in opposition, but their wickedness is going to be evident to all true believers. Just like we saw in the Exodus that those, those uh, uh, wizards, those enchanters, those, those false wise men of, of Egypt, we knew that they were against God, that they were loyal to Pharaoh and not to the God of Israel and Moses, his servant, in that same way. We can expect there's going to be much opposition to the true servants of God. So I want to close with the words of Yahshua, of Joshua. When he challenged the children of Israel, are you going to be people that, that fear God, that serve God in sincerity and according to his truth? Are you going to put away those things that are, are ungodly in order that you can, can serve the Lord? A very important set of questions. And my hope is that we like Joshua, will choose wisely and serve God and as as Dr. Charles, Charles Stanley say serve God obey God and leave the consequences to him don't worry about what you may lose what may happen so what what you lose is only the things here and as I said these things are all going to be lost or destroyed so what be faithful to God and be focused upon those kingdom rewards. Well, I'll close with that until next week. Shalom from Israel.